Okay, there we go. Now I know what I'm going to be doing. And darn, I for forgot I hit that, that start button again. Hello, welcome again. Hope you enjoyed that semi-creative thumbnail I just put up. Yes. Someone at WWE Creative got a little too creative, folks. And that's going to lead into the title of this. The title of this show is the Attitude Era back? Indeed. And we'll talk about that. Um, let's see here. Wow. I have a lot of stuff to do first. First of all, there were the two pay-per-view shows. I figured I might as well get, get my accolades out of the way first. I made my pre predictions. And for Fight for the Fallen, I was eight out of nine. I got eight out of nine matches correct. I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, are they really going to be that predictable? If they are, AWE, this horrible can predict what they're going to be doing when I'm half asleep. That's not going to bode well for them. But again, that means Triple H was running that show. I knew what Triple H was going to do. I was in one Paul of X head. And then for Extreme Rules. <laughs> I was, was, was 8.5 out of 12. And the reason why I was 8.5 out of 12 is that I had Seth and Becky Lynch winning their match, which they did, and retaining their titles. But I did not foresee Bron um, Brock Lesnar coming back, cashing in, and beating Seth. So I figured I'd give myself a half point. And that means better than 50. I'm um, actually a lot better than 50 50. So Stephanie McMahon. She must be watching the show. And as always, after any pay-per-view, I think I really should. Yeah, this is all the people that um, converse with me, either via chat, Subscription or in Discord. So let's see if I can get this whole list down. Not necessarily in order, but a whole bunch. So access point no. The six count goes out to you.
N7 Sovereign, you are an air guitarist. Yeah, that's right, Slicks. You're carrying the boombox briefcase. Toby, 2210A. You just won by dirty pin. Keating Fish, you are an honorary member. Of the Al Generico band. Last read us one. You just performed the holy spit. See, I'll skip that one. Careful, Blue. Sorry, I missed you. Just because of that, you are the luchador waiting on a forklift.
And Lilfinity69, it's always good to see you drop on. See you drop on by. You get this Mundo Madness shout out. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Sean Strife. Not only does that my thumbnail have back, but so does your shout out. This machine twenty two. O M F G. And five second pose. You obviously know your kung fu very well. And there's one more person who I will give a shout out to tomorrow because that's all the videos I made. Wow. I actually didn't know that. I have to make more. I have to somehow make more. But that was pretty good though. Um, oh, I should have put that picture in there too. So with all that being said, this is going to be my raw recap show. Again, I already let you know how I did for my pre predictions. But then tonight on Monday Night Raw, this was a kind of interesting show. And the fact that New York audience did not really want to put up with stuff. Also, at the end of the show, there's going to be a little bit of a bonus segment. You get to see how this guy, Hobo Tomlin, because I haven't done it in a while, you get to go into the Hobo Kitchen with me. The one, the only hobo, Tom. And see how to make a chicken cordon blue sub. Only because that's what I had for Fight for the Fallen. And I figured it's been a while. Oh, okay. I'm yawning. It's been a while since I've made a hobo kitchen segment. And I have to, I'll have to do that. I have some accounting stuff. I'll do that after this video is posted. And I have to go to the gym. But first I have to make this video. Well, process this video. That's going to take a while. 
Well, let's get started with Raw. Um, I'll try and be as brief and concise as I can. I'll try and keep this video under an hour, I hope. That's with everything in. Um, so Brock Lesnar comes out with Paul Heyman. Just going to kind of a recap. Um, there's going to be a cross Brian top 10 battle royal, which is fun because I haven't seen a good battle royal in a while. And it's going to feature Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, Big E, Cesaro, Braun Strowman, Rey Mysterio Jr., Baron Corbin, Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley, and Roman Reigns. So, you know, one of these people is not winning because he's already a, a six time WWE tag team champion. And that's Big E. Tag team people never do well in these things. So, I'll tell you what, I like the fact that they opened up a little bit differently. They gave a little tease as to what the show is going to be. And for the most part, I like that. It was only 10 minutes. A little recap. Um, Paul Heyman did his whole 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 spiel. So it was good. It made me interested for the show without putting me to sleep, which is a good sign. Again, if you have like a 10-minute introduction, I'm actually kind of fine with that. 10 minutes is probably the upper limit. I know Impact is like a two to five minute recap. But again, that's not too bad. At least it tells you what happen and what could potentially happen for that for that show. So I like that. Uh, so the match started off it was a two out of three falls. It was um, Ricochet and the Usos versus Bob Roode and the Revival. And a two out of three is small. Three, two out of three falls match. And really with this we actually have a pretty good clash of styles. Like, you have a very classic wrestling background and Bob Roode and the Revival versus kind of, kind of the high flyers, the flippy flippy people of Ricochet and the Ushos. Um, the first pin was really quick. I think it was like two moves. Whatever that kind of half like half code breaker is that Ricochet does. I forgot the name. And he did his 6-3 splash. The first... Oh no, he didn't do that. Yeah, it was just that like Half could breaker thing. It was a it was a very really quick pin. So they got the first pin. Revival came out. They they were they were so confused. Um yeah, it was like like a really weird slapjack after the hot tag after Jamie made the hot tag to Jimmy Uso. It's like a slapjack for a for a quick pin, which was really weird. So now now it's one one. So that means you know what happens, folks. We go to break. And it's a commercial break. I'm not going to put my Yano up because that's only for a break in programming shows by this guy, Hobo Tom. Oh, and by the way, I saw, I just watched, I think, early today or early last night, or early, really early this morning. The Yano Naito match for the G1 Climax. Gold! That's the gold standard. I actually got a gif of, of Yano untying stuff. That's just... That match was... Oh, it was quick. But uh, darn, was, was I entertained by it, though. So again, after commercial break, we come back, and, and now we have a more traditional match. Uh, again... Scott Dawson is just such a good chain wrestler. Um, the revival again, the, the classic tw uh, uh, double teams. I don't know if Dawson got like knocked in the head or something. Like he wasn't paying attention. He was jogging with a fan, and like, because the next thing is like they whipped um one of the Usos into the corner, and you can see him like like go like, oh, whoa, and then he dropped down. It's like I like shake those cobwebs out. I'm sure worse has happened to him. Again, just classic, really smart isolation. Uh, Jey Uso busts out the flippy stuff. I mean, Ricochet hits the 630. He records that pin. And, of course, that prompts AJ Styles and the Bullet Club, who are too sweet, to come out. Um, the faces, and then, of course, the heels get involved. And the faces aren't numbered. And... Again, the club shows up. It was really good. Uh, what else happened? Yep, they hit the magic killer. 
And that was a good, fun cheeseburger match. To start the show. So again, hard to complain about that. The next match was the Viking Raiders versus Jackson Dune and Vinny Broder. Uh, the local jobbers. It's a squash match. Again, the false cover again. Do do it once, it's fine. Do it a second time. Okay, this is getting this is getting old. Again, the move set just looks awesome though. I mean, of course the Viking Raiders went over. Really? Uh, this was a can of soup match. Mainly because they did that kind of forced cover thing again. And eh, it was okay. Um, let's see. Then we had a Shane and Drew versus Roman Reigns and Undertaker highlight. Then Drew McIntyre versus Cedric Alexander. Can't I uh, can't gut you because one that would be illegal. Oh wait a second, he's right. You can't cut people on on wrestling shows. That is illegal. But I wonder if evis if evisceration is illegal too. I don't know. Um, so now again, here you have the true clash of styles, and the, the, the flippy flippy person and Cedric Alexander, the two hundred five cruiserweight. Versus just the, the, the Scottish brute. He just brutalizes people and punches them and kicks them. And gives them, like, botchy headbutts. But again, with this, um, Drew just started to toss Cedric around. Poor Cedric. Um, eventually, again, um, because of a miscue on Drew McIntyre, Cedric Alexander gets the upper hand. He starts doing his high-flying stuff, which is as well as he should do. Um, and then after a while, there was some, like some, that was an intersetting drop kick on Drew. That was pretty cool. And it was like a botch off the ropes because it looked like Cedric was going to do something with his back to Drew and like the, the, his head connected with the back of Cedric's head. Just like botchy. It was played off as a headbutt, but no. These eyes know better. Uh, eventually, Cedric Alexander won with a roll-up. Again, Drew's being victim of roll-up. That's never good. So I don't know if they're going to have the rumored match between The Undertaker versus Drew McIntyre for SummerSlam. We'll see. I mean, this might mean nothing. Drew might come back tomorrow and just, like, absolutely or Next week, and just beat the tar out of Cedric Alexander. So what he should do. It was a roll-up victory, though, with Drew. Makes roll-ups, unless they're really well-timed, make the heel look incompetent-ish. So, therefore, this match is just a ham sandwich. Then we had Finn Balor promo and saying about how he's upset about losing the IC belt. Then Samoa Joe has a rebuttal at Gorilla position. And this leads us to the next match. So really in the three quarters of an hour, we got a lot of wrestling. And we got about four matches in, in an hour. I, I, I can't complain about that. So we had Samoa Joe versus Finn Balor. And Joe and Finn, this seemed like a really quick match. In fact, I went to the bathroom in it and it was over. So Joe won. I'm sure it was pretty good. Um, Finn was very upset, though. He decided to do the unface-like thing. Teasing a turn to the Bullet Club. Indeed. Well, you could have factions galore. AJ US title. Finn IC title. The Good Brothers Tag Team Champions? That would be cool. Um, but the match overall, eh, a ham sandwich. Let 
And from what I heard in the bathroom, I didn't see much most of the action. I just turned the volume up, used the bathroom quickly. It was over, so I mean that's Samoa Joe and Finn Balor. I mean, I think in their sleep they could they could put on a ham sandwich match. But most importantly, the fiend Bray Wyatt showed up. Had Finn Balor. Just when he thought it was like all technical difficulties because all the music went scratchy. Lights go out, and all of a sudden you hear the very horror-like music of Bray of a reinvented Bray Wyatt, the fiend Bray Wyatt. So that's gonna be good. Maybe I'll do a proper fiend versus demon match for SummerSlam. That makes sense. That's so uh, that'll be pretty good. Um, and for some reason, put this down. Samoa Joe only wins when it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, he loses. And then Drake Maverick. He's like, yes, he's going to consummate his marriage with his very lovely wife in a hotel room where the WWE is. Touring. Wait a second. That doesn't make sense. But oh well, whatever. Wrestling. Wrestle, wrestle. Um. So so he pays cash. <laughs> and then, hard truth. So he refers to him as Hornswoggle, e even though he never called himself Mister and Miss. They, he registered under Mister and Mrs. Twenty Four Seven Championship. Oh well. And then I think like Drake Maverick was giving out like hundreds, and like our truth tried to bribe the the uh, consigne with like a dollar or something. It was okay, whatever it is, what it is. Then it was the street profits there just being hype men. That's kind of what their, their their role is, and I can live with that. So what their roles is hype men. They kind of just went over again, did a quick verbal recap. Without all the video packages. Then you have Long Island's favorite son, Zack Ryder. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Versus initially Maria Canales. But Mike Canales says, no, sweetie, you're pregnant. You can't do that. Even though Maria says, listen, I'm pregnant. Our unborn child could be a loser. Uh, Mike Canales goes in the ring. It's a bounce off the ropes into the Rough Rider. <laughs> and then it's a pin. One, two, three. And for change, the hometown hero wins, which is rare. Um, Maria just runs down the husband. Really in a can of soup, man. So now let's see here. Oh, we had a really fun match. Well, I thought it was a really fun match before a really lousy match. And you'll know. See here. Um, oh yeah, I got those people. No, I have more people. Oh no, I already put them down. Yeah, what am I looking at? So we have the club versus Lucha House Party, which is pretty cool. It's a three-on-three -three match. Um, it's Pill Club versus the WWE version of Lij. Los Ingobernables de Japón, or or de Mexico. So it'd be L I M. Los Ingobernales de Mexico. Yes, I don't know. Probably racist to say that, but who knows. Uh, so it was fun. Yeah, for the most part, they just the club just beat on poor Grand Med League for a while. Um, Grand Med League, I don't know how. I don't know how they do it. He like jumps and walks on the ropes, crab style. I'd be like, dude, I would. Fall and break my nose or something. I just can't imagine doing all the stuff they like. The rope walking they do is like amazing. I mean, I've seen big people do moonsaults. I think Tucker Knight pulled a moonsault off, and I'm a little bit smaller than he is. And I'll say, just from seeing him, I think our legs are about the same size. His legs might be a little bit bigger, but I've pulled off a moonsault before. So I mean, moonsaults and like just jumping, <laughs> just 
<laughs> Otis just he's using his suicide dive. He's like, ah! This goes on like like launches himself on people. That was fun. That was funny. Because <laughs> you're like, oh my god, is Otis going to do that? It's like, thank you, Otis, for not killing yourself. And uh, then Gallows eventually tags in. Too big. Too big is Gallows. And AJ's. AJ's the best. Is, AJ's a really good heel. He's a smart heel. He just. When the one guy's in AJ's corner. When, um. Poor Grand Malik was in the corner. He just started to stomp on him through the ropes. Again, very heel tactic. Very heel, heel shots. AJ knows how to play heel, though. Again, from his days in the Bullet Club. Because they're too sweet for life. Now I just have to remember that this And Ricochet comes out. He tries to make the save. Commercial break while, while Scrum ensues. So that's, that's not too bad. Quick little restart. Uh, Kalisto gets involved. Lindsay Dorado gets involved. To their demise. Um, eventually, Kalisto gets the calf crusher. AJ doesn't let go. This is a very New Japanish match. And when you start getting the Bullet Club and New Japanish like matches, instead of a WWE style, you're going to get a cheeseburger. Then there's more recaps, a little Seth promo. I'm involved in this match. This was not a good match. This went on way too long. It became Alexa Bliss's Wrestled Mania. It was a fatal four way elimination to determine Becky Lynch's challenger at SummerSlam. They could have done so much better is what I just said. I was just so bored. I'm like, wow. So you got Alexa Bliss versus Carmella versus Naomi versus Natalia. For the longest part of the match, it was a showcase between Natalia and Naomi, which wasn't too bad. Carmella was going for the optimistic pin, and she was doing it very cartoonishly. And by the way, Carmella, you have to watch what outfits you wear. Because one... This guy could see bra. And two, panty lines. Be very knowledgeable about I can see it. You know, others can see it too. And <laughs> I think oh, I'll get to that shortly. That was funny though. Uh, Eventually, Carmella goes. Carmella's a pair of lungs on her. Every time she would, she she wouldn't win or, or not get the pinfall. She'd always scream at the referee. So that was that was okay. I think by the time she did for the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth time, it got old. And then eventually, Carmella uh, Alexa got rolled up, but she was smart enough to kick out. Kick out. Uh, Carmella eventually got eliminated. She got pin. I think. Alexa, I think. I don't know. It was, and then Alexa went into wrestled mania. And when Carmella got kicked out, Michael Cole made such the sideways comment right to Corey Graves. It's like, it's like oh, and Corey Graves up. Oh, there we go. Carmella's eliminated, and he's like, "Yeah, that sucks, doesn't it, Corey?" Like, whoa! Because everyone knows Corey Graves and Carmella are, are, are kind of a thing. I think the rumor mill, even though they do have, well, you can see those pictures yourself, but the one has Carmella wearing a way too short dress sitting on Corey Graves' lap. And when I mean short dress, I mean stripper outfit. Dress. That's right. And Corey Graves was married, and I think his he and his wife are either estranged or separated. Carmela's not helping out. Carmela's being a very naughty girl. Um, and then oh, there was a leg drop, and someone kicked out of a leg drop, 
leg drop, probably the most protected finisher, especially of Hulk Hogan's. And, and poor Becky's face. You could tell Becky looked beat up only because of the amount of makeup that Becky Lynch was wearing. She had almost that plastic face, which is ugh, not the most attractive face. So I know she did have a pretty good Easter egg on her head face. For some reason, it, there was a really like bumpish thing here. I forget if that's where the hit her or not. But poor Becky, she's just getting beat up. Like, what, what happened if you don't know what the spot was? Lacey Evans went, went to go deliver an overhead chair shot. Becky Lynch was smart enough to hit her in the gut with her chair. But then to sell Lacey Evans, who should be back in NXT, dropped the chair to sell the gut shot, but the edge of the chair literally hit Becky on, like, the face. So it's like, Lacey Evans, go back to the Florida house, shows, house show circuit. Jeez, why is it so hard? Or is it just... I don't know. I'm only kind of goofed up today. But, yeah, Becky's face she can't catch a break between her... L Lacey Evans and Nia Jax. Um... This crowd was not happy, though. There was the one innovative pin by Alexa Bliss when Naomi, when Natalia had Naomi in the Mexican surfboard. Natalia's shoulders were on the ground, so Alexa Bliss is small enough to fit between the two ladies and went for the pin there. But I'll tell you what, though, that crowd was not having it, though. They were chanting, This is awful. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> they were chanting, you suck. You suck. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> it was... Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. I think even for a while, like they just like chanted, Goldberg. Card was unhappy. Nikki tried to save it. By like going on the mic and say, You will, you will. You can't, oh, you will cheer for. You will cheer for my best friend, Alexa Bliss. I can't speak in a Scotch accent, so it looks like I apologize. I can't speak like that. You will apologize for saying mean things about my best friend, Alexa Bliss. She does not suck. Stop chanting, You suck, Alexa. That was. <laughs> she didn't make it any better. Because then she just threw the ire of the crowd. The crowd was not happy. I was not happy. I think a lot of people in Discord were not happy. This was not a good match. It was way too long. Eventually, Danny wins. Um, I think by Sharpshooter. It, it was way too long. I'll tell you what, if that happens at WrestleMania next year when they come to Tampa... Beach ball mania. Beach ball mania. So therefore, that match, reading my writing correctly, and I, ha I haven't done this in a long time, was a piece of toast. Then you have Dolphin Miss TV. And that was, well, uh, whatever. Dolph is getting long gone. Then they were teasing a live sex celebration in Drake Maverick's hotel room with his wife. And it showed him for the longest time just wearing the 24-7 championship. And eventually what they did show his, his, his white underwear. Our truth is a brave man. Um, his wife was wearing... A white hotel robe with some like lime green, aqua blue lingerie. 
And for a while, I was kind of hoping, because she ordered room service, the guy walks in and stays there. And then you're like, oh, wow. Is our truth going to forget where he is? And the referee is going to count, <laughs> give the three count when, when <laughs> Ray Michelle is on top of Jake Maverick. And Ray Michelle is going to be the next 24 7 champion. But no, that, that would be too creative. That would be too goofy. Um, R Truth was doing the classical thing. He was hiding underneath the tray. He rolled up Jake Maverick, who in turn was just wearing white underwear. R Truth, you're a braver man than I. But then he eventually pinned him on the bed and ripped the belt off Drake Maverick, exposing said white underwear. And the wife was there totally shocked. Drake Maverick, I feel for you, man. But then we got finally to the Battle Royal, which is good because I haven't seen a good Battle Royal in a really long time. And Battle Royal is to be really fun matches. In fact, I think this was the highest rated match of the night. Uh, Jeremy, all, all, all the participants go in the ring. I, I, I already listed them off. I want to save a little time. And then they ring the bell. And for the most part, Seals versus Faces and the Rivals pair, square off. Cesaro just goes around giving... It's Uppercut City for Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro is the first one to go, tossed out by Big E. And I'll try to get some of these elimination, eliminations down because I wrote them down. Lashley, it's tossed by Baron Corbin. Big E tossed Yeah, Big E tossed Sami Zayn. Big E got tossed by Randy Orton via RKO and then kinda just got tossed out. Oh no wait, Zayn didn't get eliminated. So Cesaro was the first to go. Lash was next. Big E. Yeah, Big E. That was a good back and forth between Big E and Braun Strowman. Uh, Sami Zayn eventually was too happy and eliminated by Big E. Zayn, um, oh, actually, I'm sorry, Sami Zayn actually eliminated Big E. Because Big E eat an RKO out of nowhere. Sami Zayn was opportunistic. He tossed Big E. Zayn gets tossed by Randy Orton. Randy, uh, Rey Mysterio gets, gets literally thrown out of the ring by Braun. Then it was a triple team on Baron Corbin because it was Randy Orton was on the outside. It was Seth, Roman, and Braun just triple team Corbin. So obviously Corbin was next to go. Uh... Braun goes next. Uh, Seth actually eliminated both Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman at the same time. That was Randy versus Seth. Seth was the last man in the ring. Heyman gives a pretty good promo. And for a change, the crowd went home happy. And that was, and this actually was the most fun of the night. The crowd was the happiest for this. They got what they were promised, which is always a good thing. It was entertaining, and it's, and it's not like they've had a battle royal on. For a while, and a battle royal is one of those things you can that can survive commercial breaks. So all you have to do is just like listen. Okay, ref has to go. Okay, commercial break. Just like punch each other, and that, that's easy. So that's one of those things that can survive commercial breaks. So actually, this whole battle royal, I, I gave it a surf and turf. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, but wait. Oh, then uh, Hyman, gave, then Hayman gave a pretty good promo. And it was really, gave, gave the rub really to Seth. So that was really good. So I'm going to keep this because I need, I'll just write that name down. Let's circle it now. Hayman really gave the rub. Oh, I already did circle it. To Seth. Because that's going because he Seth is going to be Brock Lesnar's opponent in SummerSlam. I'll tell you what, it was a good raw.
It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. It was on the better. It was it was on, on the better side of average. It was good. Um, I can't complain again. That that woman smash just literally zonked the life out of it. But that was way too long. I think that woman's match was actually longer than the Battle Royal. That should never happen. But that was raw. Stay tuned because following you're going to learn how to make a chicken cordon bleu sub from this guy's Hobo Tom's kitchen. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. Please stay tuned if you want to see what happens the goings on in the Hobo kitchen. Then I'll see everyone tomorrow for Tuesday Smackdown. Later. Hello folks, welcome again to Cooking with Hobo Tom. I'm the one and only Hobo Tom and you are today in the Hobo Kitchen. Today, because we're going to be watching All Elite Wrestling Fight for the Fallen, I'm going to make it kind of a little bit of a special meal. So right here, um, kind of started things a little bit. I figured I'd make a video. I haven't made a video on, on how to cook stuff in a while. I'm going to be having a chicken cordon bleu sub. So there I have my nice long piece of Cuban bread. Yum yum. So that over there that's coming up to temperature. Pull out a refrigerator earlier. And here, I know it doesn't look like it, but it's actually chicken tenderloins. And we're gonna let this sit in some honey mustard. And let's see here, what else do we have on chicken cordon bleu? We have some prosciutto, and I know there's some Swiss cheese in there too. And then actually I'm gonna pull out the french fries because that's a pretty skinny sandwich. I don't think I have that much French that many french fries left anyway. We have some French fries, some nice little crinkle cuts. Let these thaw out a little bit so it doesn't take quite as long to cook. Let's go down there. Let my cat just ran out. So again, I'm gonna. Let, I always like to let things marinate for a few hours, not so much overnight. Not a fan of overnight marinating. So this is going in the refrigerator. It's a fairly clean area, so I'm just gonna sit there, be nice and protected. Come back. Um. Later, and I'll show you how to make a chicken cordon bleu sub. See you more later. Thanks, thanks guys for watching. Hey, welcome back, folks. I'm back from the gym. It's time to start cooking a little bit. Oh wow, it's 6:50. I have to be on YouTube in about wow. Uh, let's see what time is it really? Yeah, about 6:50. So I have to shower up, cook. So again, I'm going to set my oven nice and hot because you saw me marinate. My chicken, right now I always like to cook the french fries first. And I always like to let them thaw a little bit. So let's see, let's go fridge, french fries. I like something different. Just have some crinkle cut french fries. Still some ice on them. It's probably more than enough because I'm just going to be watching wrestling for the next couple hours, I think, unless I get a magical happy phone call. So again, I have my oven set. It's Preheating so that way I know it'll take at least 20 minutes. I set it nice and hot. It'll be nice and crispy french fries. I'll throw this in said garbage bag. And I'll be back because the chicken's probably done marinating. I'll start pulling out the other ingredients like the prosciutto, Swiss, and some other stuff. And I'll, I'll top this off with some hard double cherry soda. So I'll be back shortly right after my shower. Bye. Oh, actually, wait a second. I know because I always do like to sterilize the grill. Where did I put my shoes at? I forget where I leave my flip flops because this has been a hectic week to say the best. Oh, there we go, my nice new flip flops. Oh, so comfy because these are the nice kind of canvas. Wands. Oh, and there's the hobo cat. Say hi. What, what, what's that? Yep, so again, as always, I like to kind of, I don't clean the grill off a lot. Actually, I actually have a nice new grill brush. Ooh, grill brush. Wow. Get this organized. Yep, I always do things super last moment anyway, so. I mean, I told people I'd go online 
probably about, yeah, sometime, well, that's not too bad. I mean, as long as I'm there by 7.30, start covering stuff. Seriously, let's go get the grill ready. Ooh, that thing's heavy. That brush is heavy, too. So I'm having kind of hiccupy issues with the thing, so actually I can go check that. No, cheese spell, you can't go outside. You already had outside, outside time, so no. Well, at least it's not even iced. It's melting a bit. I think it just needs some, some downtime, I think. I can remember 4th of July. I think a friend of mine is stuck in New Orleans, so I kind of center thing of swamp thing. It's always, always want to be safe because I always turn this thing off. Oh, there's, there's our friend the lizard over there. I'll be right back because I have to change the propane out. Give me a couple minutes. Got the one side started. Um, this grill is just kind of getting old. I think the lighter went out, so I used a little bit of a flame stick. Old school flame stick technique. Light. That to the side. Yeah, you can kind of take a look at the, the hobo grill, you can see kind of chunks missing. So I'm going to let this warm up and sterilize itself, get that gas kind of going pretty good. And I'll be back. Let's see here. Jeez. Yeah, she'll be fine for a few minutes. Oh wow, that got relatively dark pretty quick. And let's see here. So I just got jumped out of the shower. You can tell it's dark because really low light levels. When that's like the brightest thing in the house, that's pretty scary. Here's the chicken I was marinating earlier. And I used the honey mustard, because I think traditionally in Cordon Bleu you put honey mustard on the sandwich. Um, I'm gonna incorporate pickles, because there's the bread. Just tape, I have to retape my antenna out here. But I have the chicken all kind of marinated up. The grill, this grill gets really hot really quick. Then we're going to go searching for my cat so I can start to build the sandwich because this probably takes about 10, 15 minutes to cook. So let's see here because right now it's about a little over 500 degrees so this is going to go woo, really fast. Let's see here. Especially, in, I'm actually going to wash my hands up too. Yeah, you can hear that the sizzle. I always put it on the top. That way it doesn't necessarily get burnt. So again, I always use the wet hand, dry hand rule, especially when filling. So let me go put this in, clean up my one hand a little bit with the batch of honey mustard. I don't like to bring these flip-flops in the house because I have no idea what's outside. I have to get the cat in. So in a moment, let's see here. If you put this down, Spend a few minutes. She might have snuck out that one hole on that side. It's the plastic filled up with water, so it's we'll swirl get all that junk out. About to fill up for a little bit. It'll we'll go right down the drain. So it's kind of liquidy stuff. And it's 4:30. You can actually hear French fries sizzling a little bit. So let's go find. The infamous Hobo Cat Chispa. Yes! Let's see, where did Chispa go now? She does like to go around the yard, and because it's been raining, I think this is the only day it hasn't rained. So that's good. I'll have to close that up too. Flops go back on. God knows what's living in this ground. And I always like to close this, keeps things really hot and warm. You can already tell, it's almost 
we are cooking right now. I'll get back up to temperature. Let's go find the cat. Notice emergency sandbags. Summer dead butterfly bush. Bush that I cannot kill. The secondary grill. The other bush that I can't kill. Ladders just in case. Oh, there she is. She's, she's by the infamous hole. Where were you going? Did you see that, folks? Have to go all the way back through the house and go get her now. She's smart like that, though. Because this is her territory. She's actually chased off. There's my baseball backstop back there. Probably didn't see that that well. So let me go get the fuzz muffin. My neighbor's yard, Santa. You never hear of Snowball the so all the reindeer, ah oh, yes, and this confounded my old ex-girlfriend. It's very simple folks, it's a tension bar. Slide that little thing past. Sometimes you have to close it a little bit. And I'm locked out in, but I have to go get the cat. Even though she has her collar on, I still haven't gotten her license yet. That's gonna happen sometime soon. I'll turn this water off. Yeah, you can see the difference between light and dark. It's really weird. Then it's that weird hour. The night. Let's see here. So out here it's a lot less. Oh, get in here, you. <laughs> she goes running right in. She knows where all the entrances of the house are, which is a good thing. There's a bird's nest up there. I think in one video, one day I'll post it. Let me turn the light on quickly. The chicken is grilling. I'm going to start to build the sandwich. Um, it's really basic. See, I always hate it whenever I can't find stuff now. I have some Cuban bread I got recently. It's a basic knife. You can't use Cuban bread because it's a little bit on the thin side, so it's not super doughy. And you can do that or, heh, there's a twist tie. Do that. I just keep these, you never know what you're going to need it for. It's my Cuban bread. Very basic pickles. I, don't need, I just want to use the rest of those up. Then the two main aspects of a cordon bleu sandwich is ham. In this case, I'm using actually some prosciutto and Swiss cheese. Let me check this camera. Okay. So very simply, while the chicken's cooking, I'm gonna slice open the bread. And those of you asking, oh, you don't have to wash your hands. So I just got out of the shower and I already washed my hands, so I'm probably as clean as I'm gonna get for a long while. Um, I always like to try and split it. The thing with Cuban bread is that it's kind of crumbly. You just have to make sure you don't really cut through the bread, but just cut enough. And again, I can tell because of where the knife is. I can smell the French fries cooking pretty good. Yeah, so that's actually not too bad because that kind of broke in half, so I can at least deal with that. That'll be my halfway point. Kind of broke a little bit, but it's not too bad. I'm going to put the plate over there. The way I always like to build my sandwiches, the way I was taught, was you always put the cheese first. And for the most part, we need all this cheese, because again, this is kind of a celebration of sorts. And I have to get in line in 15 minutes, so I have to kind of pick up the pace a little bit. It does take a little bit to get set up for online stuff. Um, if you want, you can add mail. I, I, I figured, because I had the chicken in the honey mustard dressing already. It's probably enough moisture for that. I think that clocks like a minute or two fast too, so that's not too bad. So, so that is my halfway point. I always cut it in half. So at least I know where the halfway point is. So I have six slices on 
top. Okay, my Fujita di Parma. Oh, you can use this ham. Um, it's really all up to your taste. I had this left over because I had a Tuscany style pizza with prosciutto, fresh mozzarella, and what's the half one? Oh, there we go. Prosciutto, um, fire roasted peppers. Some people say you want to put put this and cook it as well. I figure it's already cooked, so it'll be fine there. So I'm gonna kind of layer it there. I try and cover up the fat a little bit. And there we go. So I think we done this quickly. I, I use forks to get the pickles out. Basically, pickle. I figure it gives it a little acidity, a little crunch. Cuts the fat, cuts the sweetness a little bit of the honey mustard chicken. And this is kind of an optional step. I've had these for a while, so again, I don't like to necessarily put you there. Halfway point. I necessarily don't like to waste things once I open them. I like to use things up as I go. I have just a little bit left over. That's not bad. Just go right back in the refrigerator. Another layer of cheese on top of that. There's no such thing as too much cheese, folks. Again, three slices there. Midway point. Prosciutto, I like, might wind up, I don't know, I think I might just have enough. I think my chicken's almost going to be done because I just took a look at the clock. It's been about 10 minutes, so let's see if I can get this nice and quick. Oh, gee, that was the quickest way. That's not, that actually was pretty quick. So there, this one is at the bottom. Get this out. One. Three and it'll actually well, I planned that out perfectly. That was even with making a pizza and everything. Just make sure you get rid of that plastic. It's all set, just want to wash my hands. Get us tongs to go get that chicken. A little plate for that chicken. And I kind of measured it off a little bit beforehand. So I know exactly how much chicken you need it. I'm just going to stuff that there for now. That. So, let's see. so let's go back outside. So ten more minutes. Oh, watch out, Chispa! So you're guarding the door from from who knows what intruders might come in the house. And flip flops go on because in Florida, Florida is one of two things. It's either a sandbar or ant hill. You can actually smell it pretty good from out here. Again, it's <laughs> wow. Take a look at that grill. It's almost about 600 degrees. So that chicken's probably well done by now. I'm just gonna kind of lower that. Ooh, don't want it, want it too far. I just want to get a little crust on the opposite side. Chicken's actually really well done too. But it's kind of something got stuck. So what I like to do is the first thing I always like to turn this off down here because that's the main gas valve. And typically a poop. 
poof. Yep, there's that. Ooh, that grill is still like 500 degrees. Always turn things off. Ooh, that's still there for a moment. Three left. Um, I just want to get a little caramelization on the second side of the chicken. I get my frosty beverage ready. There I have my black cherry vodka. And I'm also going to turn my oven off too because I know those fries are done. Glass. Appreciate it. So there's my nice frosty glass. One thing I think I'm appreciating coming to Florida as I get things done in about five minutes, that's not too bad, is I now like ice in my adult beverages, mainly because it's hot outside. And you have your basic cherry soda, nothing complex. Again, one, two, three, more than enough. Top off with cherry cola, so you're, you're just double cherry cola. See where that fills. Actually, it even sounds right too. You, you can hear when the sound's right. Let's head on back outside before we start, because I have about a minute and a half left. You got chicken, because it should have caramelized on the second side by now. I know it's done, and I have no, no question about it being done. I just wanted it to have that. Nice smoky, that good smoky taste to it. So again, everything's off. It's, it's really still cooking. Get tongs. One, two, three, four. Close that. Grab this and this. Let's see here. Wow. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I stuck my camera in my mouth. I don't know if you saw any facial hair features there. Nope, oh, she's whapping her tail at something. Very simply, last up, all you do is that you build a set sandwich. So again, this is the, reason, the other reason I chose Cuban bread. It's a little bit again thinner, so you're not so you're eating mostly meat instead of having mostly bread. I'll set that aside. I'll go there again, so I remember where I cut it. Let's get a, I don't know, flea knife, doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, look at how simple that was. And there's half, two perfect halves of a sandwich. Kind of squish things together there. Again, so you already have kind of a nice little honey mustard base for everything. Arrange that a little bit, squish that there. That's good. This is why I can never find anything in this house. So French fries are all set. I forget that's cheese or that. Um, where did... I have my own little particular fry scoop only because it's a little bit wider.
Yeah, you can cook your french fries as long as you want. Um, I don't mind if they're burnt. Some people go crazy if they're burnt. Some people like them all burnt. I think as long as they're crispy on the outside, and if they're this kind of crinkle cut french fry, um, soft and chewy on the inside, that's all good. You go there. And let me show you what this whole thing looks like together. So this is my kind of celebration for Fighter Fest. Let me turn on another light so it's a little bit brighter here. That are nice. Oh, look at that combination. That is a feast true we made for a wrestling fan. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, this video will go up. You probably just saw the Raw video, my Raw recap. So again, if you like things, you can leave a comment, send an email, say, I really like that food. So you can always say that. Um, if not, I have to get things started for my RR &R show. Everyone, again, we're in the office. I have a computer playing quickly. The Wall of Wrestling. Everyone have a good night. Enjoy.